Well, this is what uh, you might call a raw video. It hasn't been edited. It's put together very quickly um, in response to the request of some of my students before the final exam. In this circuit, they tell us the circuit's been like that with this switch open for a very long time. That phrase has been like that for a very long time tells us that the circuit is in steady state. So we write steady state. Because the source is an AC source, the circuit is in AC steady state. And that implies that its solution can be done using phasers. And we will do uh, that, phasers. But to use phasers, we represent the voltage source with a phaser, which would be 2 with 0 degrees as a phase, 2, with an angle of 0 degrees volts. The 2 remains the 2, the resistance remains the same, and then we need the frequency. Omega is 2 radians per second, as we see there. And from that, 2 radians per second, we can compute the impedance of the inductor and the impedance of the capacitor. That is the next step. Reactance of the inductor, omega L, 2 times 1 is 2 ohms. Mm, the reactance, right? The impedance is J times the reactance would be J2 ohms. So we can uh, write that in a moment. The reactance of the capacitor is a negative 1, negative 1 over omega C. And that would be negative 1 over 2 radians times 1 sixth. And that is negative 3 ohms. So the impedance is negative J3. Let's draw this circuit in the phasors domain. Instead of this 1 Henry, we have its impedance, which is J2 ohms. Instead of the capacitor, we have its impedance, which is negative in J3 ohms. Well, the question actually is, what is the voltage in the capacitor with this polarity, V of C, for T greater than zero? Well, what happens at T equals zero? At T equals zero, this switch closes. Or when it closes, it bypasses this resistor. It effectively removes that from the circuit. Mm -hmm. So we find what were the initial conditions in the circuit at t equals 0 minus when the circuit was still in AC steady state. We want to find what was the current in this inductor and what was, was this uh, voltage in this capacitor. Mm -hmm. Let's solve the circuit when it was in AC steady state. So in the circuit in the phasor domain, we could find that current and this voltage using many different methods. We could use MNA, not all analysis, that is, or we could use mesh analysis. But I'm going to solve this in a different and easy way. This current here is the current in the source. I will compute that current dividing this voltage of the source by the total impedance seen by the source. So let me write that. That current current in the source, which is also the current in the inductor as a phase, by the way, will be in the voltage of the source, which is 2 with 0 degrees, is just a real number, 2, divided by the total impedance, which is 2, comma 2, this is this impedance, plus uh, the series of 5 in parallel with J, negative J3, plus 5 in parallel with negative J3. And that is that current. And we use a calculator to solve for that. So 2, which is the voltage, and then 2 spines 2. Mm -hmm, that is that impedance. And then 5, enter in parallel with J03 negative. Want to put those two in parallel, go to next Z in parallel with Z, and add that with the other one. That is the total impedance. Divide 2 by that. That is the current. But I want a numerical value. That is the current. 
that is occurring in rectangular mode, but it's occurring. I'd rather have that in polar form this way. 0.6 amps with a phase of radians? No, I want degrees. 3.54 degrees. To find the voltage in this capacitor is as simple as 2 volts minus the drop in this impedance. And that is how I'm going to compute the voltage in the capacitor is 2 volts minus the drop in that impedance, which is the value of that current IL that we just computed this one, multiplying by the impedance 2, 2 of this branch. And we do that in the calculator. And that is the current, all right? Let me duplicate that. That multiplies 2, spice 2, but in rectangular mode. Mm -hmm. Multiply them. And then subtract from 2. I subtract that. And that is the voltage in the capacitor. When rectangular mode in polar form is 155 volts with negative 55, 49 degrees. Like so. And then what? Well, what we need is to find uh, those uh, voltage and currents, but not as phase source, but at exactly t equals zero. But before doing that, let's write those currents and voltages as functions of time. The current in the inductor as a function of time is the peak value of 0.6 root 2 sine of 2t plus 354 degrees. 354. Convert that into radians, of course. And that is the current. If we evaluate that at t equals 0, we obtain the initial current in the inductor IL, not that we will use in the Laplace transform solution. The voltage in the capacitor is the peak value 155 root 2 mm -hmm. sine of 2t minus 55. 43 degrees, but in radians. Multiply pi divide 180. And those are volts. Evaluated at t equals 0, we obtain Vc0, which is the other initial condition that we will need. So, sine of 334, uh, 354 degrees multiplied by root 2 times 0 0.6. That is this value. Mm. That current, this one, pick, enter. And now oh, we are in polar. Let me, from the complex number format to the stack, I want the sine of that. It's in degrees. Yes, that's right. The sine multiply times 0 0.6, root 2, multiply. Evaluate that as a number. And that, that is the value of the initial current in the inductor. Let's uh, write that in milliamps. 52.52 milliamps. For the voltage, we do something similar. Let me pick this value down here. Uh, in degrees, and uh, let's break that. And let's take the sine of that. Multiply by 155 and by root 2. Evaluate that as a number, and we get that the initial voltage in the capacitor was negative 1.8 volts. Well, what this means is that the initial voltage in the capacitor actually was not like this, but like that. 1.8 volts. So if I want to write in here, it's the same. Good. We are ready to go to the Laplace domain solution with this switch closed which eliminates by passing this resistor. Now we're going to represent the inductor with an initial condition source in series with an impedance, SL. The initial condition is going to be L, IL0 is going to have this polarity, 
L is one Henry's and I L naught is fifty two. Fifty two milliamps. Allow me to write it like this. Mm -hmm. Mm, so I use in, integer numbers, which is better for the calculator. For t greater than zero, we have only the two ohm resistor. The other one has been bypassed by the closed to switch, and the capacitor is represented by its impedance, one over C S, in series with an initial condition source, with the polarity of the initial condition. This value is 1.8 divided by s. Well, let me write that as 18 divided by 10 s. This source is a sinusoidal one with a peak value of 2 root 2. So in Laplace, and that is um, 2 root 2 omega, which is 2, that is 4 root 2, divided by s squared plus omega squared, s squared plus 2 squared, which is 4. That is Laplace domain representation of the source. Mm -hmm. I think we're ready. This is just S, of course, because L is 1. And this is going to be um, 6 over S. We are ready to solve that circuit in the Laplace domain. I'll choose this as um, my reference node. And this is uh, node number 1. What's the advantage of this choice? That when I find V1, V1 will be directly the voltage in the capacitor, which is this one. Please do not fall in the trap of believing that the voltage in the capacitor is the voltage in this impedance. No, because the capacitor is represented by these two elements, all right? So the voltage in the capacitor is from here to there, which in our case is V1. Well, let's solve it. Branch currents with the direction of your choice and we write a KCL equation. KCL1 is the value of this source. Let me write it here for root two root two divided by a squared plus four plus the value of this source which is five two five two divided by a mm, hundred thousand minus V1 divided by the impedance of the branch, which is 2 plus S. 2 plus S. And that is equal to current that leaves the node, this one, V1 over 2. V1 over 2 plus the current in the capacitor, which is V1 plus the source divided by the impedance. So let's write that. V1 plus the source divided by the pins, which is 6 over S. And that is the equation we're going to enter in the calculator. That is the equation. I'm using the letter X instead of V1 because it's easier to type. Let's solve it. Turn that into an array of only one equation. We put X in an array. And then we solve this equation for x. Symbolic solver. Linear system of solution. And that is V1 in the Laplace domain. Let's copy that. But before that, so let me show you that the CIS in mode has all those little buttons unchecked. Good. So that's why it worked for me. And this would be the solution of the problem if we were being asked to find the voltage in the capacitor in the Laplace domain. Observe that instead of writing a longer expression, I represent this constant number A with this expression down here. Well, but we were asked to find that voltage as a function of time. So we need to find the inverse Laplace transform. And that is what I'm about to do. First things first, let me break uh, that array objects to pieces, eliminate that count, 
and this object also break that into pieces, eliminate uh, these two symbols. That is the expression I want to find the inverse Laplace transform of. But before doing that, I have to match this variable of the Laplace domain with the independent one that appears here. So right now, this wouldn't work. I have S here and I have X there. How do I change that? Mode CIS and this independent variable has to be S. Edit that. And then you can go there and say this variable is going to be S. OK? And OK. See? Now it's S. Now when I ask for the inverse Laplace transform of this one, it will know that this is the independent variable. And that is what we're about to do. One directory up. Variables. Next one. Laplace directory. I want to find the inverse Laplace transform. I prefer to solve an equation or to find its inverse Laplace transform with a system working in radians and in rectangular mode. Let me go for that. Inverse Laplace there is the solution. That is the inverse Laplace um, transform of that voltage. So this is the voltage as a function of time, you say, but there is an S here. Yes, in the time domain, the independent variable is time. So for the calculator, S is T, is the time. It has an exponential, decaying exponential. 5 over 2 times T, multiplying a cosine of this frequency times T, times a constant. You say, well, I cannot read that properly. If I go down arrow, I see that there, and that is not that good either. Yeah, down, 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 until it becomes a transparent block. And then I, I travel through my expression, copying each one of the values to my paper. I can do that. I simplify that with the weight. Mm -hmm. And I get an expression there. With what flux did I do that? Let's see. Only the approximate one. All the others remain cleared. OK. Well, that expression is the one that I'm going to plot. And down arrow, red, copy, enter. In 3D, down here, edit, red, Paste, bingo, enter, and the variable, independent variable is S. Do not forget to change that to S. I had already done it. And now we go to Shift uh, Windows and say, I want to plot that. Between 0 and, uh, I don't know, 10 is good. And what is the vertical axis? We'll make a, a computation there. Good. Erase what you have and draw a new plot. That is the voltage in the capacitor. It begins at negative 1.8 volts and then it moves to a different oscillation. The new steady state. If this circuit is in steady state after 5 taus, what tau? Well, this tau, 1 over 2.5. In that time, 5 times that, 1 over 2.5, the circuit is again in AC steady state. Thank you very much.